you can say nice things about any movie. You just gotta try a little bit. Look, we came up with 10 awesome things about Battlefield Earth. Surely we can do the same for Manos, The Hands of Fate. Manos is the 1966 independent horror classic from auteur and fertilizer and insurance salesman Harold P. Warren. This El Paso-based film about a family stuck in a lodge of devil worshippers premiered in El Paso, then had a brief run in drive-ins, before fading into obscurity until being unearthed in 1993 by Mystery Science Theater 3000, where it would earn the reputation as one of, if not the worst film ever made. Mmm, I've seen worse. Here are 10 awesome things about Manos, The Hands of Fate. Number 10, look, it's got a remastered edition, which honestly should have been called the remastered edition. This Blu-ray was released by Synapse Films, working from a 16mm work print discovered in 2011. Honestly, it's bizarre enough watching the movie without Joel and the bots. When you watch the movie unriffed, you can still kind of hear the jokes playing through your head if you've seen the episode enough times. So if that's weird, imagine how bizarre it is looking at this highly polished HD version of the film which no longer looks like a shoebox full of pictures of a serial killer's murder victims. Sure, it does take some of the charm away. Watching it in full snuff film quality is the best way to watch the film, but the remastered version is worth it for curiosity and proves you really can polish, uh, you know... Number nine, sure, a lot's been said about all the driving in the film. The pacing is way off. Supposedly, opening credits were to go over the sequence of the family driving while listening to music and having no dialogue, but instead, <laughs> let's go on a virtual road trip. This is awesome, and I'll tell you why. Drive-in movies come and go. This one certainly had its brief run at the drive-ins, but very few of them actually contain what appears to be the drive to said drive-in. The movie is a full drive-in experience. It includes the road trip. The screen's gotta be around here somewhere. Now let's watch this movie so we can reflect on our drive only moments ago. Number eight. Well, it didn't shoot day for night. You know, those obvious scenes in movies where they're clearly shooting in the daytime. But hey, we'll put a filter on it so it's totally night. Oh no, not Manos. Not only did they shoot in the dark, but there's evidence of it by all the moths that they attract. What? You can count the moths as crew members. It adds to the atmosphere. Look, if Manos, the hands of fate, can shoot at night and I can still tell what's going on, bigger budgeted movies have zero excuse for using day for night. Number seven, the movie is the only reality show worth watching. It's a group of wives together in a house, fighting over their master and engaging in cat fights. I don't know how many horror films this movie inspired, but it certainly inspired Andy Cohen and the Bravo Network. And much like a real reality show, by the time we get to the end, we've all lost. Number six, when you watch the unriffed version, you are treated to a handful of scenes that did not make it into the MST3K version. You missed out on the opening shot of the city, which is kind of weird seeing a city in Manos the Hands of Fate. And if you thought the driving was long before, you haven't seen the unedited driving. The backing up and pulling out really did add to the suspense. Speaking of weird, even though it is a horror movie, it actually is a little bizarre seeing blood in Manos. I can't imagine why they left this sequence out. It better not get fetishy. Eh. In a post-365 days world, unedited Manos is a drive through the fields. Number five. Well, they had a crew, as you can see by this special cameo appearance from the clapboard. The film was shot on a 16mm Bell and Howell camera that could only shoot 32 seconds at a time. And not only did they use all of those 32 seconds, but they appeared to do very little trimming on the beginning and ending of shots. There's even enough for some behind-the-scenes footage. Another thing that's a bit shocking to see. It's like saying, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall during that production, and then you actually do become a fly on the wall during that production. 
Not surprising at all that there was a lot of chain smoking going on during filming, but you can tell how great they got along with the director, considering in one shot they credit him as klutz. Number four, the master himself, Tom Naiman. Naiman not only played the villainous master, but also served as the costume designer and the set decorator. He also is kinda creepy in his role as the master. He's like if that trick-or-treat horror film was about bringing back a murderous Freddie Mercury. He's exactly how I picture running into a Deep South Devil Worshipper. A creepy, lanky, mustachioed polygamist with crazy eyes that suggest he's going to force me into a human sacrifice and make love to my dead corpse. He feels like some terrifying cult figure I'd see on True Detective. I like this villain. Number three, the movie does have lasting power. After its MST3K resurgence, we've had 27 years of not just cosplaying, but articles, documentaries, and websites dedicated to the film. Sadly, this was all after Warren's passing, but the movie had mainstream references on such shows as How I Met Your Mother, and even has such a devoted fan base that there's a sequel and prequel to this thing. First, there's Manos Returns, featuring the original Master and Debbie. And then there's the Torgo origin story, Manos, The Rise of Torgo, also featuring the original Debbie. The cast of the original film really did embrace the movie, which is also worthy of respect. Number two, there is passion in this film. Writer, director, producer, star Hal Warren made a bet with producer Sterling Siliphant that he himself could produce his own horror film, and by God, he did. The movie has a beginning, middle, and end. It's not confusing, unlike some other movies. He assembled a crew, local actors, shot the film, and even gave it a big Hollywood-style premiere. They could only afford one limo that had to go around the block to pick up and drop off the groups of actors. But at least there was a limo, and there were searchlights. The premiere didn't go so well, and neither did the reviews at the time. But Warren, while admitting the film's faults, still stuck by and loved his film like it was one of his own. Warren would wear the master robe during Halloween, a tradition carried on by his son, and he even wrote a second feature called Wild Desert Bikers. Due to the reception of Manos, the movie was never made, but I am all for seeing this masterpiece get greenlit. Make it just as the script intended. Don't get snarky and make it self-aware, and most importantly, shoot it on the same kind of camera. And the number one most awesome thing about Manos, um, John Reynolds is Torgo, of course. Torgo is a possible satyr who takes care of the place while the master is away. He's like a cross between Charles Manson and John Belushi. This character is so important to the story that he has his own theme music. John Reynolds was a young local stage actor who studied acting at the University of California, and it could be his passion for acting, or the fact that he was on LSD during filming, or both, but this man dives deep deep into this character. The physicality of the performance, the speeches, the facial tics, John Reynolds becomes Torgo. Say what you will about the final product, the character of Torgo is a real character. You can't take your eyes off of him when he's on screen. Sadly, Reynolds took his own life in 1966, but he earned his status as a horror icon. Whether it's due to the filmmaking, the master, or Torgo, you're gonna have a good time watching Manos with friends, which in and of itself is awesome. What are some other awesome things about Manos, The Hands of Fate? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, subscribe to our channel today at youtube.com slash stonegremlinproductions and follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob. I'll get the, the luggage.